here it is, the big moment, one of the top three decisions you'll make in your life. The first car moment. Ah, the excitement. Ah, the temptation. And the confusion. Okay, take a deep breath. Let's analyze the situation. Buying your first car should be an interesting and rewarding experience. Well, as rewarding as spending a bunch of money can be. And because it is such an important decision, it should be something you only do when you've really, really done your homework. So here are three things to consider. First, analyze your driving lifestyle. Who are you? Where do you live? What do you do? How do you spend your time? How many people and things will you carry along with you? How much traveling will you do? Answering these questions will give you a realistic idea of the size of vehicle you're looking for. If you are all about the outdoors and sports and winter adventures with a pile of friends, then you might need a larger vehicle. That's a very different requirement from someone who takes public transit to work or school and does a minimal amount of driving and the odd trip out of town. Someone who'd be a perfect candidate for a smaller vehicle that can handle you, your groceries and a pet. Second, analyze your choices. There's more than one way to get from A to B, so choose the one that's right for you. Today's motive power choices include hybrids, hybrids that combine electric power with a gasoline or diesel engine and have low fuel consumption. These vehicles automatically shut off when you're idling and restart when you're ready to go, which adds to their efficiency. These vehicles are so smart that you never have to worry about the battery running out. Diesel-powered vehicles that typically get 30% more distance out of a tank of fuel compared to the same size gasoline vehicle. Smaller, Smaller. conventional gasoline-powered vehicles, which can be very fuel efficient depending on your choice of engine and transmission. They're capable of delivering amazing fuel economy. And 100% electric vehicles that need to be plugged in and recharged. These vehicles are suitable if you travel short distances and produce no exhaust emissions while on the road. Whether you're buying a new or used vehicle, look for choices that meet your everyday needs and use the least amount of fuel. Avoid temptation. There are some thirsty, fuel-guzzling vehicles out there. And you'd be surprised to know that they're not just large pickup trucks and large SUVs. Some high-performance cars use way more fuel than cars that give satisfying, if more moderate, thrills. Think light, think small, think efficient, and choose the vehicle that meets your everyday needs as opposed to buying something that you may need only once in a while. Finally, do a little math. Come on, don't be afraid. We want you to keep your money in your pocket, not in your fuel tank. And we want you to be very stingy when it comes to contributing CO2 emissions to our environment. On every new vehicle, you'll find an Energide label. Understand what those numbers mean, but most especially what they mean to you. If the highway consumption looks good, but the city fuel consumption is not as spectacular, Think about where you drive. Are you on the highway or in town? Where are you most likely to do your most driving? For example, a vehicle which consumes seven liters per 100 kilometers uses half the fuel of a vehicle that consumes 14 liters per 100 kilometers. If your vehicle isn't going to be new, you can still get reliable numbers on older vehicles from websites like vehicles.enercan.gc.ca, which will also give you annual fuel costs, which helps you when you're budgeting. So there it is, buying a car made just a bit easier. Analyze your driving lifestyle, choose the vehicle and power that's right for you, and do your math to figure out which choice uses the least fuel, environmental responsibility, and money in the bank. What a great combination.